we feel like um, Black Mesa is like the microcosm of the whole world. And, you know, there's very few communities that are really in touch with, you know, this um, beautiful world that has been created for us. I think if people paid attention more to, um, you know, elders and the way that indigenous peoples look at, you know, the earth and can learn a lot more about who we are and the human race and the direction we should be going and living, um, and it's, it's a, it's urgent. Mm -hmm. It's very urgent. I work with the Black Mesa Water Coalition for about seven years in protecting our groundwater. And Black Mesa Water Coalition formed to address you know, water depletion by Peabody Coal Company that have been um, using our water for over 30 years to transport coal from Black Mesa to um, a power generating station located in Laughlin, Nevada. So it's about 300 miles away from um, Black Mesa. And they built this pipeline in the late um, 70s, or the early um, 70s. And um, it's the longest water pipeline that slurries coal in um, North America. Um, and actually one of the only kind of pipeline that slurries coal um, to generate electricity in North America. Um, so they've been using pristine groundwater um, from the Navajo Aquifer and about 3.3 million gallons of water a day would go through the slurry line. As of 2006, they stopped using the groundwater uh, because of community um, pressure uh, to our, our addressing the issues of water depletion, but also that it's a waste. You know, we're using pristine water for to slurry coal. I mean, it's not to actually drink, it's actually just to transport coal to Mojave Generating Station. And so that's kind of how we started a lot of our organizing and um, going to do community presentations, um, trying to get younger people like us to be more involved. And actually it was um, a really neat time because you know, that's where we met Calvin and a lot of other young, um, young men and young women that were Navajo and Hopi that come from different communities within Black Mesa um, and really, you know, wanted to start to organize around addressing, you know, our future and the needs of our communities that we, you know, we can't have corporations <laughs> taking over, you know, our lands. We can't have, you know, um, this, how the system is set up is really, um, a system that doesn't allow our communities to be in the lead of designing what we want in our communities, what kind of a, um, economic development, what kind of, I mean, yes or no on this project. It's really in the hands of um, governments. And even our own tribal governments, we, we've, um, we're, we've been in a little bit of a, you know, kind of like a battle, you know, over Black Mesa um, because they have the authority to um, say yes, you know, we want you to use our water. Yes, you know, we want you to use, you know, mine more coal. Um, yes, we want this project to expand and not really giving attention to local residents that live right there by the mining operations, but also everyone who depends on the Navajo aquifer in Black Mesa. So those are things that we've been trying to push as more accountability on our governments and um, uplift the local community chapters to, to really exercise their autonomy in, you know, um, designing and planning what's best for the, their community. So we started up as a youth organization um, doing a lot of reactionary um, planning, like protesting and, um, you know, different types of um, activism work around um, uh, you know, getting the message out that water is life, water is sacred, and that, you know, we need to be careful how we use our water, but also how we um, take care of our lands and um, what is, what the, what's the future going to look like, you know, 50 years to 100 years from now. And that's kind of the thinking that we're trying to push within our communities. And our elders understand, our people are, that are of old age, they understand the need to caretake of our land. Um, 
and it's just a generation that's older than us, like our parents' generation, that is kind of caught up in, um, you know, the way things have been dealt with for so long, and the way that our government structure is um, set up to just, you know, do business as usual and not really address, like, you know, this is this is not right. <laughs> we got to do, you know, change something so that, you know, our people are, you know, deciding what what's best for them, not some not a government that is um, that is kind of a, a you know a foreign entity <laughs> and being controlled by like this this government, the U.S. government, um, and corporate you know intentions to mine more and generate revenues. We feel like um, Peabody has violated our you know right to practice our way of life and has violated our right um, to determine how we want our communities to be, you know, as people. And so these violations, there's a lot of, I think there's a lot of human rights violations that Peabody's committed in our communities. Um, I mean, when you say that even to our Navajo Nation, they would probably get offended too. <laughs> but I, I feel like um, even within the U.S. government, uh, they violate um, our rights to practice our um, way of life, our religious practices, you know, spiritual practices. And I think that's the angle that we want to um, push for, that Black Mesa is a female mountain, and she's alive, and she's powerful, um, and that she's been um, disrespected for over 30 years by this mining corporation. Um, but also disrespected, you know, um, by our own people, you know, too. So we, we need to really make that um, um, offering to Black Mesa and to the earth that, you know, there needs to be healing happening soon. And um, so that's, that's our, uh, our way of organizing, I guess, is always through prayer and always through our, our traditional ways of going about things. And um, let me show you here. This is the map of the Nav Diné Bikeya, we call it. Diné Bikeya is, Bikeya is like our homelands. And right here is Flagstaff. So this is the sacred mountain to the, um, to the west. And then we have another sacred mountain up here. Um, where is it? Which one? Oh, right here. Um, What's that? This is Mount Hesperus, and this is a North yeah. Sacred Mountain. Mm -hmm. And then we have another one just close by, too. It's, it's the eastern part of um, the reservation. And then there's a south one. Yeah, yeah, Sisnajan, yeah. And that, that's to the west, east. And then our south one is right, right here. No, 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 right here. Wait, wait. Yeah, right there, Mount Taylor. Yeah, Mount That's Taylor. That's been um, a lot of uranium mining. Yeah, proposed this is proposed where we're uranium mining. So this is, it's like kind of a diamond shape, but this is our, this is um, the holy people. This is how they created our lands to be within these four sacred mountains. And then in between, there's a male and female mountain. The male mountain is the Chuska Mountain here, which is like Lukachika area on the Navajo uh, reservation. That's and then. <laughs> and Jahan's like from around here somewhere. Yeah, right here. She's from right here. And this is Black Mesa right here. And this is a female mountain right here. And they say her head is up here and this is her whole body. Um, and so we need the male and female, you know, to be healthy. So our, you know, this is like an altar. And we have a major river here that runs. It's a Colorado River. A major river on this side, which is the Rio Grande. Um, little, a major, or minor little, or the, the little lakes, or not lakes, but rivers, yeah, is um, San Juan, and the one on this side is um, Little Colorado River. So you need that balance there um, to have, you know, it's kind of like a home. It represents our home. Um, and when you go out to the reservation, you'll see a hogan, and, um, and there's a lot of great representation of this altar with our hogan. Um, because it has a four directions and has that male and female duality always um, within our philosophy and our prayers and everything for it to, there to be balanced. Mm -hmm.